Hi everyone, and welcome to another episode of Unboxed, Watched, and Reviewed. Today's movie deals with incest, pedophilia, bestiality, and necrophilia. What movie is it? Well, let's take a look back and find out. What is it? All right, well, it's wrapped up in sacks. Oh! Where the Dead Go to Die. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Where the Dead Go to Die. I've gotten lots of requests to do animations on the show, but I never really found anything that looked interesting enough to do until I saw a clip of this. I saw a clip of it, and it was fucking fucked up. So I ordered this movie from the director himself. He had a thing a while ago where if you order the movie directly from him, he will write a story on the back of the slipcover. Well, I haven't looked at it yet, so should we see what we got? We open her up. We pull this bitch out. Ooh. One time I found a goat carcass on the beach. I cut his stomach open with the intentions of moving inside. But when I looked inside, I found a family of 12 living inside. They demanded that I feed them the partially digested food within my stomach. I cut myself open and started feeding them chewed up cheese and mashed up cupcakes. It was beautiful until one day I made a mistake and gave them food that was digested into shit. The shit made them crazy until they vanished into dust. Consider this my suicide note. Love always, Screamer Claws. So, with that read, you guys ready to start this? It's gonna make me wish I was on drugs. I know I am. Play. So there's a kid walking around while these credits play. He's walking right by the title. So it opens up with this kid, Tommy, and he asks his mom, Where do babies come from? The mom gets mad at Tommy and says, You've been talking to that thing down in the well, haven't you? Get going. Go to school. Get out of here. So he leaves. On his way to school, he encounters a black dog, Labby. Labby is a black lab whose head moves around like the dog from the Money for Nothing video, and he's got red eyes, and he can talk, or I should say whisper loudly. So Labby tells Tommy that Labby then tells Tommy that all mother's breast milk becomes tainted when they're carrying their second child. And breasts are in fact sins. The dog actually says that breasts are sins. He's telling the kid that at least. So they go into the mother's bedroom, but before Tommy can kill her, the dog jumped in and pulled the baby out of her pussy. And now they're showing her with her legs spread and blood is just gushing out and he's got his umbilical cord hooked to her puss. And now the baby's flying on the ground. And now the dog's biting off the dad's dick who slept through all this. Labby says, your dad's penis is where the sin originated. Then Tommy looks over at his dead baby brother. Labby. And suddenly, this weird portal opens up. It's like eyeballs, but they're like spinning in opposite directions, and it's really fucked up. He's fallen through this spiral pit of faces, and they're turning and turning, and he's falling into a guy's mouth, and he's got like six eyes. Down in the pit, he encounters a fetus, which is floating around in a bubble. Then suddenly, the kid is back home, and he's like, what the fuck? He looks in front of him and he sees his dad sitting there reading the newspaper. The kid says, Dad, are you okay? Mm, that sure look good. Fight, oh, fight! Diarrhea! You don't want a cookie, Tommy. You love cookies. You love them. Keep them up. Then just weird shit starts happening and I felt like Lucifer Valentine directed a video game that you can't play. Then it shows Tommy talking to the well. This shrouded figure appears behind Tommy and asks Tommy, 
What's your greatest wish? Tommy says, I wish my parents were still alive. And then suddenly, now the dog's talking to him again. Labby says, God told me I can grant you your one wish if you give me the ultimate sacrifice, which is your virginity. And Tommy says, okay. And it cuts to my favorite shot in the movie. Oh my God. The kid is fucking the dog on, and the dog is like on top of the dead mother. So then it shows the kid's O face as he's coming. After he comes, the dog is gone. There's maggots in the mom's mouth and he's laying next to her saying, I'm sorry about what happened. Oh, now he's walking to the fetus. And he picked it up and now he's holding it. The camera slowly zooms back and we move on to the second chapter, which is called Liquid Memories. Or, as I like to think of it, The Giver 2000. The story is basically this. What if I told you I found out that there was a gland in the back of your brain that holds all of your memories, and if you inject it into yourself, you can trick your body into opening up the gland early, and you can go in and edit your memories. It then cuts to a street corner, and we meet a hooker. She picks up a paraplegic who has metal rods for legs and they go back into an alley. She's like, get down on your knees. And she's jerking off his leg. This is like a weird game. Then we have a liquid transition which shows a flashback of this guy from when he was in the war. The enemies of the war are people with large cookie heads. He's sticking him in the knife with an eyeball. You know what I mean. It eventually goes back to the alley where the hooker is giving the guy the leg job. And he looks down at her face and she has the face of the enemy. A giant sugar cookie. He just slapped the hooker. None of that rough stuff. I don't do that kind of thing. Oh, and he's sticking his thumb into her eyeball. She grabs this green bottle and she bashes him in the neck with it, which kills him. Now she's crawling away, totally bloody. She crawls up to this doorway. Four monsters open the door and now tentacles grabbed her. They pull her into the church where the bearded man is. And she tells him of what just happened to her. My eye! He took my eye out! That would, that's sick. That's making me feel sick. It's reminding me of Ronald Popo. I feel it. So eventually he gives her a hug. And during that hug... Oh, he slit her throat. So now that she's dead, he... So now he's injecting himself with her memories. It was the first time that anything close to me had died. He falls through a vortex and ends up in this strange land with people who don't have faces and all sorts of fucked up shit happening all around him. Stuff like this. What are they? The eyeball vortex returns and the man embraces the bloody whore. Uh, kind of a strange film. Hmm. The guy winds up back in the church and he sees all sorts of fucked up shit. Oh, now a lady's finger in her cunt and there's a baby face on her taint and it's spitting out blood and her pussy spitting out blood. This entire movie moves. So while you're looking at something as fucked up as this, you got something even more fucked up going on in the background. There's people fucking all over the place. Every inch of the screen is filled with something fucked up. People fucking in a desert. There's a flying eye octopus, a goat head, jacking off. Now the dog has a human face, and he's walking around like this, like the guy from Freddy 3. The man finally shoots himself. We then move on to the next segment, my personal favorite. So this one opens up with a kid watching TV. This kid has two faces. One regular sized face, and another one on the side of his head. It's his Siamese twin brother. This boy's name is Ralph, and suddenly the ground opens up, he falls through, and all sorts of fucked up shit starts to happen. Look at all those eyes. 
If, if you played a drinking game, drink every time you see an eyeball, you would die. It cuts to later that night at the dinner table and the dad says, Take off that mask at the dinner table, Ralph. Don't you think your brother is hungry too? He doesn't have his own hands to feed himself. Don't toy with your brother like that! So this kid has a pretty bad childhood. The kid says in a voiceover, I was lucky in a way though, I found the love of my life, Sophie. I really like your drawing. Now this is when the movie starts to get really sick. Ralph decides that it's pretty important to him that Sophie's dad likes him. So he goes over to Sophie's house and starts talking to the dad. The dad says, Schweitz, you know. Famous? Yeah. Oh, he's holding a VHS tape. He's selling the kid this tape. So Two-Faced Ralph goes home and watches the tape. Oh, no. She's sucking this guy's finger. This is pretty disgusting. So the next day, the kid returns to Sophie's house and he gives the tape back to the dad saying, I don't know if I liked it. She was crying. And the dad says, She was pretending she was crying because you weren't the one fucking her. Now I want you to take this home and I want you to watch it again. He's watching it again. Oh, and he's... And the dad caught him. We then go to Sophie's house where her dad is furious about the complaint. Did you know that a customer complained about your fucking stupid crime today? So it's time for her punishment. Oh, now Sophie, don't you dare make a mistake. Hard to hear what he's saying. It then goes back to Ralph who's looking into the well. Labby comes up behind him and pushes him into the well and says, This is death. And then he's suddenly standing before a wall with all these pictures on it. Pictures of Sophie. Labby tells him to touch the wall so he can feel what she feels. He does and guess what? All sorts of fucked up shit starts to happen. Then suddenly Sophie and Ralph are in her garden. She says, Will you take off your mask? Well, I guess. She touches the brother's lips and says, it feels weird. She then says, this is the happiest day of my life. I sort of feel real depressed. Then Ralph's voiceover says, said she's amazing. Feeling happy, he returns home only to get severely abused, which sends him into another hallucinatory hell ride. There's a hard cock, hard animated cock. So it achieved in depressing me. Let's see if this movie can give me a migraine. Check. Oh, now he's got a gun and he's pointing it at a horse, naturally. He shot the horse and now it turns out that the horse was the dad because the dad's laying there dead and there's all these naked monsters behind him. And he flew back, flew through the wall, and these eyeballs are going nuts. Not he landed in his bedroom, and his dad's yelling at him. Your mother's twat squat? The next day rolls around, and Ralph goes over to Sophie's house. He's at the creepy dad's house now. Sophie is dressed up in her slutty outfit, getting ready to film a movie, and she's really ashamed. We then see what it looks like through the lens of the camera. Now this was some of the best animation in the movie. But 
The dad tells Ralph to take off his mask while Sophie keeps on saying, Please stop, please stop, please stop. Ralph? Ralph takes off the mask and the dad says to Sophie, Stick your finger in its mouth. Tell daddy what it feels like. Then shit starts to get psychedelic again. The kid's looking down at her, and now it was staring into a giant pussy with eyeballs coming out of its stomach and big tits and this huge pussy. It looks real now. It looks like a statue with smoke. And it seemed, it, I don't know what to say. It appears he ripped her face off and his face fell off. His mouth. Then it goes back to Tommy, the kid from the beginning. He's shown talking into the well. This time we hear the well respond because inside the well is Sophie. So the little girl is the person in the well. Obviously I was very confused. She's this weird monster now screaming and there's all these pussy monsters all around her. Pussy soldiers. Ralph goes home to find his father watching the tape. Sophia's dad dropped this off a little while ago. Now the kid's in his house and he's walking in and his dad's watching the porno. With him in it, with the kid. He then admits to... I know how it is. I've fucked her before. There's no feeling quite like it. How about next week me and you go over there together and we'll double team her, huh? Kid's grabbing a baseball bat. He bashes him on the head over and over again with a baseball bat. Then he goes upstairs. Oh, shot the mother. Then it goes back to Sophie's house where she's laying almost lifeless on a mattress while two men jack off over her body. Ralph goes in and shoots one of them. Then the father, who's videotaping, blows a kiss to Ralph. And the kid blew the dad's head off. Labby says, I'm proud of you, Ralph. But, but there is one more person standing in the way. He's referring to the Siamese twin on the side of the kid's face. So Ralph gets a knife and starts to... He's cutting off the face. It then goes back to Sophie who's laying on the mattress almost dead. She says, if I remain like this, daddy will never hurt me again. She then closes her eyes and dies. Okay. All right. Now the kid's at the well with the double face. He goes to the well and says, I need advice more than ever. And there's no response. I need you. Don't leave me. I thought you loved me. The shrouded guy comes back and he says, she can't hear you anymore. And the kid says, who are you? And he says, the one who can hear you. Now the three kids are laying around the well. There's a shrouded guy, a woman in a dress, and, and the main guy on a cross in the well. Went to black. Oh, written, directed, and animated by Jimmy Screamer Claus. Wow. That was by far the most confusing movie I've yet to do on this show. There was some fucked up shit in this. Very innovative, bizarre, just all around fucked up. So what do I give where the dead go to die on a scale of one to five? I have to give it a four. It was so sick and perverted, but it was a little too confusing and a little hard to hear at times. This is a good one. Where the dead go to die. Four stars. Check it out. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.